I'm Karen Haddon, and I'm the director of Seed Coalition in Texas, which is Sustainable Energy and Economic Development Coalition. We work statewide for clean air and clean energy and protecting people's health. We're a nonprofit environmental group, and we work real closely with other organizations and allies like Public Citizen. Over the years, we have worked for education about mercury contamination from coal plants. We've advocated for clean energy and had some major successes. We've promoted wind energy, which is booming. Uh, Texas is number one in the country now for, for wind energy. And recently, we've gotten San Antonio's municipal utility to go for 400 megawatts of utility-scale solar, which is really, really big. And we followed that with getting Austin Energy to pursue 600 megawatts. Um, so between them, there'll be 70 percent of the state's new up-and-coming solar energy. And we expect that this is going to boom the same way that the um, wind energy has. And so this is a big success story. It's lots of jobs, it's clean, it's the future, and it's what we need. And along the way, in order to get to this point, we fought new nuclear reactors. We first fought coal plants. There were actually 19 proposed coal plants in Texas at one time, 22 actually total. And um, we were able to defeat outright 17 of them and several others. Um, got permitted, not all of those got built, but, but it was a major chunk. Um, and this was based on climate change. We looked at this and said this is not what we need to do in terms of carbon emissions and methane. So we took that on, and this was 2006, 2007, and it was massive. There were so many all at one time, but we didn't know what to do. And, you know, this is advice I would give to people with important battles, is that, okay, just think about what seems like the logical next step and steps, who you need to talk to, where you need to go, and what communities you need to visit. And we just started taking it one step at a time and just kept moving and just kept talking to people and finding out what would work and trying this and trying that. And we just kept in motion. We went all over the state for quite a few years. And eventually, we built a huge coalition. We never saw it coming. We didn't know how it would shape up, but it grew and grew and grew. I liken it to like pushing a few pebbles off of a cliff, and pretty soon an avalanche happens. And, and it was successful. It worked. We had the strangest of allies. We had a great time. We got to know people that we never had dreamed that we would connect with. Ranchers, people who ra raise um, cutting horses for ranching. It was, it was fabulous, and it was such a great experience. So we won, and it took a lot of years. Right after that, up came um, permits um, that were proposed for new nuclear reactors. They actually wanted to build eight reactors in Texas. Four of them were serious proposals at two sites. So we didn't know how to fight that. And we figured we're going to take what lessons we've learned and what skills we've gained and just try to apply them in this new arena. And we did organizing and legal work and media work. Uh, which are all really important, and um, eventually we were able to defeat uh, four new nuclear reactors in Texas as well. None of those have gotten built, and they won't. So that cleared the path. You have to clear the path for the right stuff to come in. Um, so now what's happening today is that we're really focused on the radioactive waste. This is an important issue, not just for Texas and New Mexico, but the whole country because it impacts everyone. Um, there's a plan underway for what's called consolidated interim storage. That means taking the worst, the most dangerous nuclear reactor waste, the spent fuel rods, which we call irradiated fuel rods. They're a million times more reactive than the fuel that went into the reactor. And they want to take that um, after it's been uh, cooled off in the fuel pools. It goes into dry cask storage. Now they want to take it from the whole country and send it to Texas, New Mexico, where they would dump on really poor communities, largely Hispanic, largely poor, without the resources to fight back. Along the way, all throughout the country, they would be endangering communities, sometimes large cities, um, 
by risks of accidents or terrorism incidents. These materials are incredibly dangerous to put on the road. We think the best thing to do, there's no good answer to this problem, but the least risky option would be to leave them in place, at least for now, and um, keep them secured on site um, where, where we know where the barriers are, where we know where it is. When you put it on a highway or railway or a barge, what you're talking about is introducing the unknown, and that gives all kinds of unexpected scenarios in terms of accidents, and certainly in terms of security. Those things keep us awake at night. So we are fighting to halt the plan for consolidated storage in the United States. And unfortunately, um, we're number one. We're the first, um, first uh, licensed uh, application to go forward. It's for waste control specialists in West Texas that already has a site in Andrews County for the low-level radioactive waste. Um, and right next door, it's right on the New Mexico border, right next door there's a, a proposal for a second facility that would be even bigger. And it's called Eddie Lee Energy Alliance. It's near the WIP site that already takes waste, um, waste isolation pilot project. So these two sites together would take, if they moved forward, all of the whole nation's radioactive waste from the whole country and dump it all on this one community. In the Texas site, it would be above ground. They call it a parking lot storage site. This stuff would not be buried safely half a mile or more underground. This would be above ground. This does not solve any problem. It's expensive. It creates additional risks. The push for it is coming from the utilities. They've got this waste at their sites, and what they want to do is get the U.S. Department of Energy to take title to it so they don't have the liability, and that's really what this is all about. They have some legal hurdles. They have to change the Nuclear Waste Policy Act to get this to happen. They've got to get congressional action to get this to happen. But meantime, they are fighting really, really hard to push this forward. Uh, a license application has been submitted by Waste Control Specialists, WCS, um, and we're expecting one in March of 2017 that will be for the New Mexico site. The shipments, if this were to occur, would take place over 20 years' time, and there would be thousands and thousands of shipments. Based on the studies done for Yucca Mountain, we know there would be accidents. It's a question of how many and when and what materials are involved. Already in West Texas, we've had train accidents that were incredibly serious. Just this year, two trains collided head-on at 65 miles per hour in the panhandle of Texas. It was a huge explosion. In North Texas today, a blazing inferno. This video capturing the moments right after impact, showing boxcars falling like dominoes next to a growing fireball. Just before 9 a.m., two freight trains 30 miles northeast of Amarillo colliding near the town of Panhandle. Oh my God. Cargo containers crumpled and burning. And we have uh, three responding. As authorities rush to rescue the crew members on board. Evacuations are now underway. So far, no word on what caused the crash. And it took weeks to clear the tracks and to sort the rubble. And I can only imagine what would happen if radioactive waste was on board. I, I read accounts of the highway bridge that collapsed in California. What if there was radioactive waste coming down those highways? Um, there's nothing good about this plan. There's nothing safe about it. We certainly don't think the waste should move until at some point in time, if we can ever get a, a safe geologic um, isolation system that, that encompasses all the different aspects of, of isolating this waste. We need to get this right. We can't afford to have waste move out in the desert and everybody forgets about it. If you get it all in one site, the utilities no longer care about trying to get a safe facility for this stuff. WCS's license would be for 40 years and they've talked about keeping it as long as 100. They plan already from the front end to do extensions. If this stuff sits in the desert for 100 years, there's gonna be no way it can be moved. 
they, they don't even know how to put it into a new container. Nobody's ever done that before. So this plan is half-baked, it's not safe, and it really threatens lives and safety. We worry about the Ogallala Aquifer. This site sits right on the edge of it, and the previous maps actually show that the Ogallala Aquifer, the country's largest aquifer, it goes under eight states, it's drinking water for several million people, it's water for livestock, it's water for irrigating, for corn, for wheat, for um, soy. These are major crops for the country. Uh, it's our largest aquifer and one of the largest in the world. This site sits, um, previous maps show it to be underneath the site and the company, WCS, did a bunch of drilling and they submitted their data to Texas Tech University who in turn submitted it to the state and the State Water Development Board changed the maps and they literally moved the aquifer on these maps to where it's now shown as being above the site. In any case, it's incredibly close proximity to this massive water body that's crucial for our whole country. We cannot afford contamination of that aquifer. It's a serious enough problem that at one time, the entire radioactive waste division at our environmental agency, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, the entire division said, we recommend denying the license for the low-level radioactive waste. Even then, they said it's not safe. They said the water is within 14 feet of where waste would be, which should not have water intruding into it or anywhere near the containers. So this uh, was still, it still went forward. It was important enough that three employees of that agency actually resigned in protest. They said, we do not want our names on this. We cannot live with it in our conscience. One of those individuals had cancer and lost his health insurance, and still he resigned. And the power of that speaks to me and moves my heart. Um, so we have this incredibly important water issue. The desert is extremely hot. These containers that would come in, the casks, are not rated for the desert temperatures we've got. They're rated for up to 101 degrees. This site gets to 110 in today's world. The site has fracking nearby. Um, so far, there have not been earthquakes in the very, very close proximity, but further south in Valentine, Texas, we had an extremely large earthquake, 6.4 on the Richter scale. And so that's not too far away. Um, there's going to be increased fracking, it, it appears, because a huge new uh, shale uh, play has been found that is right in that region. It's in the Permian region, and it's much, much larger than even the Bakken shale. So we expect there's going to be more and more fracking. This seems to me like the largest science experiment, mad scientist experiment, that I've ever seen. Because here we've got a site that has three our pits already that are accepting radioactive waste. One has Fernald weapons waste that came from Ohio. One is a huge federal facility that's taking weapons waste from around the country from all the federal facilities that have been leaking and having problems. One is the low-level compact waste, any, any and all radionuclides, just not as a concentrated form as the fuel rods would be. Right across from all that, and there's just a driveway in between, is a RECRA site, RCRA, and that means the hazardous corrosive toxic chemicals, 2,000 different compounds right there. And I have to ask, what happens when those migrate? What happens when they migrate where the waste is? The high-level waste, if they took it, would be on a pad right next to all these other sites. Also, on the site at this time, are exploding, potentially exploding barrels like the ones that exploded at the WIP site in 2014. There was a fire and that got followed by an explosion nine days later, um, half a mile underground. And even from there, the explosion was intense enough that radioactive plutonium and americium came up out of the site and spread out across the land and was, and was detected. Workers there got exposed to smoke inhalation and then with the radioactive release, they got exposed to radioactive materials. That's not a good safety record. Um, so now those barrels have been shipped 
100 potentially exploding barrels are at this site. So you combine all of these things with the intense heat, um, dramatic weather, extreme temperatures, um, wildfires that come through the area, potential earthquakes, and it just doesn't make sense. Potential contamination of the largest aquifer in our country. We hope to halt this plan and we're going to do everything we can. We're, we're working with anyone and everyone who's interested. We're finding new allies in unlikely places and the doors are wide open and so we welcome talking to people and uh, we have not given up hope at all. This is a very uphill battle but we are very hopeful that we'll be able to stop this and hopefully help stop the concept um, because this consolidated storage is not the right path for the whole country. It's not only a risk and environmental injustice for Texas and New Mexico, but this risk is for everyone. Everyone who's along a transport route, it's the waters that we all depend on. So our goal is to stop it and we encourage everyone to jump in and join us. One of the things that's been happening is that the U.S. Department of Energy has been going around the country and holding hearings all throughout 2016 in major cities um, and there the map of these cities makes a big big arc across the country but there was a big gap where they did not go they did not come to Texas New and New Mexico and they were doing a process that they call consent based siting um, they're trying to get a community to volunteer they're trying to get people to say they want this waste well <laughs> they went and asked everyone else but the targeted region. I cannot help myself but to say that, that this is like a young couple and the young man would like to have relations with his girlfriend. Who should he ask? Her or eight of his friends? And this is exactly what it felt like. It's like, here's the DOE. They want to dump on us, and they're asking everyone else around the country. It felt like they were arranging a gang action against us. And they tried to tell people that Texas and New Mexico want this waste. We do not. They base that on the actions of the Andrews County Commissioners, where the WCS site is located. They've been making money off of the low-level waste. They get a percentage they expect to make money off of high-level waste. Now, four county commissioners and the county judge signed a resolution. They didn't tell the community. They didn't invite input. Um, but they passed this resolution saying that Andrews County wanted the waste. These five people are trying to speak for a lot of other people. I've talked to a lot of people in Andrews, and there are people locally who are very opposed to this, who have gone out on the street corners, gone out to the gas station with clipboards and talked to people, many of whom didn't even know this was planned. When they heard about it, they immediately said, we absolutely do not want this. We totally do not consent. And still, the DOE is trying to push this forward. They would go to these meetings across the country and say that they were going to care about the stakeholders and those most impacted. And we said, look, there is an application already submitted to NRC. Why are you not talking to Texas and New Mexico and being honest about the fact that this is already underway? You've targeted us and you refuse to admit it. They never did admit it. Um, meantime, they were trying to appear sensitive while they aligned allies to try to get them to dump on, on our region. So we do not consent. And in Texas, we worked um, within Democratic Party circles and had resolutions come in from 29 different county conventions. And this was the number one resolution in the whole state that said we do not, uh, we oppose consolidated storage and we do not support transport of the waste for this purpose, not only in our state, but throughout the country. We took that to the state convention and got it not only passed as a resolution, but also into the state platform with that same language. This is talking about the opinions of millions of people, how they feel. We've had state legislators, um, representatives and senators send letters to the Department of Energy and say, we do not like this plan, we oppose it. And yet these comments do not appear in DOE's documents of what they heard. Somehow they didn't hear us. Um, 
it's an outrage that we are being treated with such disrespect and that millions of dollars of DOE money, taxpayer money, are being used in a plan to dump on very poor communities that can't fight back. We know that people in other parts of the country have suffered with having nuclear reactors that they didn't want, and they're suffering with having radioactive waste in their backyard. But there are a couple factors here. One is the people who generated the waste do have a responsibility to deal with it. Um, and you know, I know that must be hard to hear for somewhere else where they never wanted it to begin with. But certainly, people in Texas and New Mexico had nothing to do with it, and why another community should, get, should be dumped on just does not make sense. Furthermore, some people think that if the waste, uh, for example, Southern California wants to get the waste out, and I don't blame them. I would, I would want to do the same. But they have in their minds that it would go to a small area and fewer people would be impacted. The truth of the matter is that millions and millions of people could be impacted because of the proximity of the Ogallala Aquifer. The impacts of shipping it to that particular location could be absolutely devastating. So we encourage people to listen to the voices of those who do not consent and to think about the bigger and long-term impacts of any decisions about where waste goes. If this waste were to move, millions of people could be impacted as the waste moves across the country, putting millions of people at risk that would not be and should not be. Millions of people could be at risk for impacts to their drinking water, to the water for uh, cattle, for wildlife, for farming. This should not happen. It's just not right.